Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome. It's another episode of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, and I'm here today with Marcus Trainer. Thanks for being here. My pleasure. We will talk more in a moment, but just a reminder to all of you out there, if you like what we do, if you resonate with our mission to connect, educate, and entertain the traditional martial artists of the world, if you believe, like we do, that getting everybody to train for six months would change the world, help us out. Join the Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick. If you're a school, check out Alliance, Whistlekick Alliance. Uh, you can have a domain for that now. WKAlliance.com brings you right to that right page or any of the other things that we do from the, the shirts and the hats and the gear and the events and all of that good stuff. And a shout out and thank you today to Karate International in Exeter, New Hampshire for hosting us. Thanks for being here. Really My pleasure. Appreciate it. I've been on the floor with you once. It was and, a little and, while ago. Yeah, 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 a few years ago, yeah. Teared Out Symposium, and yeah. and that, I, <laughs> my most memorable, I think from that whole weekend, my, my strongest memory is how strong Judy's forearms are. <laughs> yes, yes, she, she is leg, legendary. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, Judy Dirk gets bit on the show, of course. She's yeah. awesome. I think the world of, of her and, and, yeah. and Buzz, I mean, everybody at your school that I've met has just been such great people, but I just remember partnering with her and just banging forearms going, is she, is she tying rocks She's, to her forearms? She, um, she, we have a running joke with her is that she's a fantastic martial artist and we adore her completely. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to like uh, things like stage performance and things like that, um, we have to educate her a lot because um, you know how we you do things on the stage, you do things yeah. in training, you know, you do things for the sake of uh, uh showmanship and everything sure. like that she has no concept of that whatsoever she she believes that if we're going to do something on display we're going to beat each other to a purple <laughs> and the thing is it's it's not a it's not a challenge well maybe for her it is but it's it's not a a challenge like that she likes doing that right. and she really enjoys the training part of it when getting ready for that supposing we were doing a uh, uh she and i were going to be demonstrating how we're going to do um uh conditioning and uh, she just got over a big uh, reconstructive surgery on the shoulder and she's doing great she's doing great with that but it was kind of leading up towards that and she was favoring one arm and i was saying okay so just make sure we're playing out which arm we're going to hit and she goes oh hit the other arm it's fine I'm like, That's not... <laughs> I'm like okay i said yeah but maybe we'll focus on the other one she goes no no hit the other one it's fine i said no judy i, I appreciate that but let's not break the arm in in, right. in the middle while doing that and yeah. she, but but she meant it so let, let's let, let's go i'm not going to do this and do and do this halfway she doesn't do anything halfway so yes she is an inspiration and a terror to all of us at the same time, and but, we love working with but, them. But that seems to be a bit of the the culture, and I don't mean that in a, in a negative way, with, with your school. You all, you train hard, and you, we do, here yeah. we are, it's 2024, and a lot of what I remember growing up in the early to mid-80s, you're still training yeah. a lot yes, like yeah. that. And I think yeah. some of that might, we can, from my understanding can credit a little bit to, there's a philosophy of Weichiru. Yes, yep, there is, yeah. That, that, but that's not every school. Um, uh, you know, every school develops its culture in the sure. way that they like doing things. You know, and that's, um, so if you have a person who's very flexible, of course, naturally all of the students are going to really emphasize their stretch because that's their thing. If a person yeah. likes um, doing uh cardio workouts and things like that, like um, one school owner who's a good friend of ours, uh, he said, he openly says, I really like the physical fitness part of the martial arts. So he does a lot of great martial arts, Kempo and Jiu Jitsu mix, and he goes, but he said, but I really do it, I really like the physical fitness as mm -hmm. so it tilts. So, so we all, everyone tilts in that direction. The one, I hesitate to say unique, but certainly unusual setup with what we have at our school is that it's been around for such a long period of time, and we have a core of 12 uh, seniors, people who've been there 30 plus years. So there's a couple of cultures kind of going into there, all influenced by Mr. Dirk, of course, but like a couple of cultures. So we have a couple of people who really like the flexibility, really like the conditioning, really like that. But so, uh, which makes it a neat environment because the different classes will have different lineups in it. And, mm. and if someone's going into one person's class, they go, oh, good. Oh, good. We're going to really, really going to work our arms today. This is going to be fun. Mm -hmm. you know, but they kind of almost go out of their way to make sure they go to that class because they want to work on that. So, so there's, there's enough going on, and it's not the instructors aren't, it's like what I'm hearing, prevented from kind of putting their own spin. Their Absolutely. Own yeah, right, yeah. It's encouraged. Quite, quite so. I mean, um, I was told years ago, I was watching an interview about, uh, 
SWAT officers, mm -hmm. and they were talking about equipment going in, you know, what to put the equipment on. Mm -hmm. And the guy made a neat comment on saying that if the if the people are trained enough, you don't tell them what equipment to bring, they'll know what equipment mm -hmm. to bring, and it'll work best for them. So the higher the training, the more it is. And it, in, in reverse sense, we kind of have that that same type of culture. Mm -hmm. So if you have a 10-year student, who's a good student, by the way, I mean, that's a 10-year person. Very few does. students get to 10 years. Exactly. You know exactly. But if you have a 30-year student, you know that they have the basics really well down and they're not going to push, they're not going to encourage students to go in the wrong direction. They're going to go in their direction plus this. Right. And so, uh, Mr. Durkin is with, you know, let's un unleashes them a little bit. I mean, he still pulls them in and says, Hey, don't do that. <laughs> Those conversations still happen. Don't get me wrong. But, uh, and we all come in with our heads down. Okay. Yeah. Right. I know. I know that was really stupid. You know, you know we've, we've certainly had plenty of times with that, but the, um, the, because you have that type of culture in there, you'll have a lot, which is unusual. Every once in a while, we'll have a student who's stopped training with their teacher years ago because the school mm -hmm. closed or whatever, and they come over to this area and they come in. And it's an unusual culture, but it says, you know, that teacher told me to do it this way, but this teacher told me to do it that way. And it's a minor change. Yeah. And I'm trying hard not to tell them it's really a minor change, really get over it. I said, yeah, I have to explain what that type of culture is. So it, it, it benefits in that regard. So, but yes, as far as the higher training goes, um, Oka now and Styles have a propensity of being mm. a little bit more uh, hard. Uh, I think part of it is due uh, to the environment that they were in. They were mm -hmm. Okinawans were not allowed to carry weapons, so naturally they were using their forearms and their legs a lot. I think a lot of it has to do with them. Um, uh, they all were farmers too, and there's a lot of. Uh, if you look at most farming communities, those are usually relatively strong people because they had to, right. you know, to pull a root out of the ground. You reached in, grabbed, and pulled out a root out of the ground. And if you look at a lot of the exercises that came from that area, it's all farming type exercises so anybody who spent time on a farm knows the work is done when the work is done not right. at a certain time right yeah and they have forearms like vice grips <laughs> you know, ah, exactly so um uh so I, I think that might have a little bit to do with it so it, it created a culture of 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 that and um the other part of it is too is that uh, our style in particular is not a particular there's a lot of people who do competitions there but it's not a particularly competitive culture mm. uh so and our school definitely is not. Um, so there's and there's plenty of people who do competition. Yeah. So we, we we don't push them. But overall, you don't see us gearing up towards the next competition or anything like that. So, and um, so I the the people go in there specifically for the mentality of what I can do to push myself, my own self to my own next next level, which is nice because you'll have a class full of, we'll have a class full of uh, all black belts, but full of class full of sixteen year olds and eighty five year olds in the same class. Now, obviously, the eighty five year olds don't train the same way as the as the sixteen year olds do, but they all get to work with each other and they all get to intermingle with each other and uh, socially they get to connect with each other, which is really a cool cool concept as well. But for health wise, I think it's I've seen fantastic results from older people who, you know bone thinning issues and things like that. And this helps bring them out of that and make them give a little more vitality, uh, which and makes them feel like that they can walk among other ones, which is really cool too. So it helps the younger ones because they're mixing with people who are older, more experienced yeah. and it helps the older ones because they feel more youthful and lively. So it makes a neat, a neat culture mm. coming, co coming into it. So, so yeah. So yeah. Uh, yeah. So as to answer your uh, long winded way of answering the question, I guess, but that, that, that's what we do here. Long, <laughs> long wind all you want. Um, but yes, we do have a propensity of working. Uh, we have that working mentality and, um, uh, and it is, uh, we enjoy it. We have a good time. We have a good time. It had been that. a long time since I banged forearms, but I grew up yeah. with that, you know, yeah. and, and, you know, you're talking about these age differences. You know, I, I, I was in the adult class starting at, maybe 11 yeah me too yeah right yeah and it was expected not that i was given just if i was partnered with an adult and we were doing conditioning it was it was expected that i'm providing enough that that adult is receiving a benefit right. and yes. that, yeah. yeah maybe they're softening up on me a little bit because mm. i'm 11 yeah but not so much that i'm not getting out of it i wasn't a kid just kind of floating through. I'm guessing right. you yes. had a, yeah. a similar experience. Yeah, and and again, there's a difference between pushing somebody, and there's a difference between going out of the way to be hard on somebody. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So, uh, but but yes, I, I, absolutely. We have kids classes, teen classes, adult classes. But the teens that go into the adult class, you know, they they work hard, and uh, and they're expected to work to work hard in that. But you find with most scenarios, people 
if you provide a um, welcoming culture, um, and a, no matter how hard the welcoming culture is, the fact that it's welcoming and encouraged, people step up to the plate really mm -hmm. good. And uh, I, I, again, I find that just as well on the younger side of that question as well as I do on the older side of of of, of that. And we will have people and we'll have, you know, Judy Durkin is uh, a classic, you know, not hugely framed woman. We'll say this very We have people just like that coming in. And, you know, uh, some of the guys are appreciably nervous of working with them because they don't want to hurt a, yeah. a, a student. And they'll, the, the female will be young. Come on, hit me. Come on, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, that's what I'm here for. I like this. Okay, I'm trying. I'm trying. And uh, so, uh, so, yeah, so it makes that very nice nurturing type of environment, which is uh, something that we've been able to luckily keep that going mm. for a while, which, uh, which is nice. Nice. Now you mentioned, I think you said a dozen black belts in your school, 30 years or more yes. of training. Yeah. And it, this is the 50th anniversary of this year. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Of, of the school. Yeah. And of course, you know, Mr. Durkin's been on, Judy's been on. So you can go back to those episodes if you want to go a little deeper. You were in the adult class at 11, which suggests you started before that. No, I started right off in the adult oh, class. Okay. They, okay. They, they said, okay, all right, this is the best class for you, for you to work in. I had a um, someone who was training there who was a, was a friend of my father's, okay. and a family friend of ours, and uh, he uh, recommended the school yeah. recommended the school to me. And, and I guess uh, I was told that later on that he said, don't put him in the kids' class, put him in the adult class, he'll, he'll, he'll go good there. And I was, I was like the youngest one that was in there, but, but I loved, but I, I, it took me five minutes to realize that how much I enjoyed, really? I enjoyed this and I was hooked in. I, I, find, <coughs> I always find that, right, that transition, because this, this is a piece that I think, there are only a few categories, right? We, we get people that start and they float, Mm -hmm. And they kind of, you know, they're probably kids and they're doing it because their parents are bringing them. And maybe at some point it becomes their choice. Right. Yep. But you said kind of the opposite. You said five minutes. What was it about the first bits of training that you said, this is my thing? Um, I think it was really, I walked in. I was working out in the class because Mr. Durkin taught my first class. Mm -hmm. Judy Durkin taught my second class. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, went into a white belt class and it was, you know, it was like 25 white belts in there. And I was definitively the youngest one in the class by a couple of years. And there's some teenagers in there, but they were like 15 and 16 year old t teenagers and, you know, they don't want to talk to me. Uh, but but um, the adults across the board the adult, not only the teachers who you'd expect to always, you know, try to be universally comforting and, and, mm -hmm. and encouraging. Um, uh, that doesn't always happen with, 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 with right. teaching That's experience, true. but I mean, That's you'd true. expect that you expect that they should be doing that. Yeah. And, 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 and they were, um, the other adults in the class didn't look at me twice as being a teenager. Like they I, treated you as a, as, as I, was a just, peer. I was just one of them. Yeah. And even that wasn't just when I was working out. I was working out with them. That was even when we were warming up and talking with each other. Wow. It was just like, oh, what are you doing today? Oh, I did that. Like, like just, just like a bunch of guys at a bar together. Um, it was just that, like that, that type of experience. So it was like uh, any other social awkwardnesses and like that just didn't exist in that in that mm. spot. You're here to work, great, wonderful. You're one of us. Like, and it doesn't matter what level you are at. Uh, you're here to work, great. And at that age. That's not common. There aren't it, a lot of times it that, is, that, that it is. a kid... It, it threw you know, me. It, it threw me. Uh, and, of course, I, I wanted it. I mean, I went sure. in hoping for that. Um, but I didn't fully expect mm -hmm. that part to happen. And every person that worked with me... Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, there's martial... I mean, in every school, there's martial arts that are the real sweethearts and the, course, ones, and the ones and the ones a little more rough around the edges. Don't get me wrong. Yep. Um, and we have our fair share as much as anyone else, as much as anyone else does. But to... For, to a person, they no one treated me like I didn't belong there, mm. and that happened relatively quick. Now maybe it just happened to be a really sweet group of people that happened to work with, but I had people who were ex army that were in there. Um, so I mean, fit guys who one guy was a parachuter that I trained with, and uh, he told me about all the stuff that he did. He deployed to Alaska and everything like that. Oh. You know, yeah. You know, so people who've been there and done other other things like that. Another guy was um, 
uh, mechanic for uh, for tanks. And it was going on. So, so it was all d- people from different walks and different cultures. And there was a plumber that was with me who had four arms that was this big. I remember thinking, oh, dear God, I'm going to work with him today. <laughs> you know, but, I mean, the, no one was like, oh, don't uh, let's push him off the side. It was you none of that. It was, it was just, you know, line up. Okay, you're in. You know, like, like, and it was just, it was a very, uh, maybe what I needed at that time. It, it's but, such a rough age, right? You know, that, that I, I don't yeah. love the term, but adolescence yes. is such a yeah. rough time for so many and you're being, you know, physically you have adult characteristics, yeah. but culturally you're treated like a child. And, and that conflict I think yeah. is so strong and it can be so confusing because you're, you're, you want to go, you want to do, you want to be included, but you're being excluded. Yeah. In fact, sometimes it's even worse because, you know, parents are trying to keep their kids safe. You know, they right. know, of okay, course, yeah, well, right. yeah. hormones which is, and energy. And, which, of and, course, is all understandable. Sure, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. But, you, but you're talking about a rare environment where you're being included. And I think there's another piece, and this is one of my favorite things about martial arts. We get back what we put in. Yeah. And you only get back what you put in. Yeah. And and if you've got a hardworking kid, somebody who's willing to recognize, okay, I have a lot more control in this than I do elsewhere. Yeah. And then, you, then it can really... Resonate. It sounds like maybe that was your story. And for the most part, that that was what got me there. Mm. And uh, you know, other things that you know, and, and like any other set of you know, there's other things that kept you going. But that was what got me through the door and made me realize that well, I was going to stay there, at least to try you know go for the duration. This wasn't going to be like a like a five week thing. I was going to try it or something like that. This is going to be something I was going to sink my teeth into and see how far I can I can make this work. Uh, bear in mind, I had no illusions. I remember going in and saying, you know, maybe about 10 years, I might be able to be a black belt. I mean, I had no self-confidence in any way, shape, or form with that at all. I was not going, I was assuming I was going to fail every test going into it. And was just, that, had that been your experience in school? Um, no, for the most part, I did good in school. Mostly okay. A student, just naturally very low in confidence and self-esteem. Okay. And um, I had a natural stuttering problem, which okay. were, reared its ugly head on a regular mm. basis. And uh, uh Family inherited my father's the same way, so we used to joke about it all the time. It was uh, so things like that. But uh, uh, I remember specifically going for my green belt test. I remember being, and I don't know what it wasn't like. Anyone said, "Oh, don't worry, it's going to be so hard." You know, if you first three or four people fail the first time, don't worry about it. It was, it was nothing like that. Everyone saying, "Good luck, good luck, go go for it," and like that. And it wasn't like a major test. It was just a test right at the school. I mean, it was. A, and I remember going into it. My mother was driving, and I was firmly convinced. And I don't know what put this in my head. I was firmly convinced I was not going to pass. Pass the test, and I don't know what put that thought process in my mind. I don't. And it was nobody there. I, I mean, at least as far as I can recall. And I remember my father trying to be very encouraging about it mm-hmm. and saying, uh, uh, "Good luck, good luck. I look forward to seeing your belt on." And all I thought to myself, "Great, I'm going to have to tell my father that I failed the test, and he's going to look forward to the belt that I'm not going to have." And I remember being just all negative going <laughs> going into the whole thing. And I found a photo of me doing the test. Some, someone found a photo of me doing the test with the teacher that I now still work work with on a regular basis and uh i could see me almost shaking in the photo even the photo was still like this like, it's a skinny little run going that, like that's this. a lot of shaking to catch it in a still it was image. it was it was impressive <laughs> i had a lot of shaking going on that day <laughs> so my god was i scared out of my mind that time but um uh but i think it was just like with many people who go with it you know you see something you see a group of people who you for some reason respect even at an early stage of knowing somebody and you appreciate what you see, and you want to be considered uh, a contender for mm. one of them. And it's certainly not that level, but a contender for one of them. And you don't want to disappoint them. Yeah. And that was a cool, in spite of how scared I was, that was a cool experience that you had something that you really wanted to drive for, and you were fighting for something the whole time. There's another piece in there that, that I'm hearing, you're not quite saying it, but it sounds like you felt safe to fail you talked about disappointing your father you didn't talk about disappointing your instructors or your peers that you know okay i'm I'm gonna do this you don't believe it's gonna work out but you're still willing to do it yeah that says a lot about the environment it did it did and and not enough if i was negative about it and certainly he he was uh you know trained in the marines and like that's look failure happens as part he'd be the first one to tell me this but um but no uh if i walked out i remember one test they messed something messed up in the 
how they were running it, and a couple things weren't announced at that point. So I started walking out because I assumed I didn't pass. Oh. And my mother was like, "You okay?" I was like, yeah, yeah. I I must not have passed. Something like that. The guy like raced after me to track me down. Hey, get back over here. <laughs> He's like, "Come on, come on, come on, get back, get back here." I remember, I remember that. Get back here. Where are you going? I said, "Well, I, you you said I'm going to dismiss, so I, I I I walked out." I said, oh, "I guess I'll have to go back to work on it." He goes, "He goes, well, you still don't have to work on it, but we're giving you your next rank." I forget what rank it was. It was below black belt, so it wasn't mm. anything particularly significant. But I remember, I remember him being a, he was a kind of new teacher at the time. So I think he was just, I think he was nervous running the test. Sure. So I, in retrospect, I said, oh, he, he was scared of his mind. I thought I was scared. He was nervous. You know, he was Everybody's to, yeah. terrified. Yeah. All the time. This right. is like, I, I think, I think we forget this, that everybody's afraid of disappointing people. Absolutely. And, yeah. And, 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 you know, I've got my own stuff that I deal with. I'm sure you do. Everybody does. Course, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I, I, I don't remember when I, when I realized this, it wasn't that long ago. I grew up as I think most kids do thinking that you reach some certain age and you feel like an adult and you feel like you have things figured out. Yeah. And I realized, wait a second, that never happens. It never happens. <laughs> you just get better at hiding it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, or what you're worried about changes. Yeah. Right. And so once I realized, I was like, okay. And, and that's that, what's the, what's the cliche, um, you know, be kind because everybody's fighting a battle, you know, nothing right, right, about, of course, that, right, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I think, you know, it, for, for folks that know this school, uh, and if you don't, you might want to go back and, and check out uh, Sturkin's episode. I'm drawing a really strong connection between this culture that you're talking about and the fact that in a tiny town, some of you think, when I say tiny town, I'm talking about, oh, a city of 50,000 people. Not even close. No, no. And the population... <laughs> has more deer in it than it has people it, in it. Yeah. It's this... I mean, we're talking single thousands. Yeah. And I think at the peak, your four. school had something like four or 500 students. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And if you think about that as a percentage of the people <laughs> in, a, in a driving radius, I'm going to guess there are very few schools in this country that have a higher percentage of people coming in. And it's got to be things like that. So when you talk about this guy chasing you down, you're building a family. Yeah, and that's and that's what what, what the D culture is. And I mentioned the um, the uh, seniors that Mr. Durkin mm. has accumulated, and we have a group of people who you're get accounted together. in that group, though, aren't you? Uh, yeah, I'm kind of I'm the young one in that okay. group, but yeah, I'm not, uh, and um, uh, I mean, some people have been have been studying for over fifty years. So yeah. I mean, some people have been really put their Sure. Literally put their whole lives into the practice of this. Yeah. And some of them long distance relationships too, who have come back to come into, mm -hmm. but always stayed involved. And uh, one, of, one of them, uh, particularly, he lived in New Jersey for a long time. And he was taught my brown belt classes. Mm -hmm. So I had an early relationship with him, uh, with, with, with him early. And um, he talks about how even when he was down in New Jersey, he would come up for certain occasions like Bible testing and things like that. And I remember one time in particular, and this really sank it home for me not that I, I needed saying home but it was like it was like oh that was really neat you know one of those t types of scenarios like geez he right. didn't have to do that and no one would have held it against him if mm. he did do it or anything like that and we were doing a black belt test and back before we realized that maybe doing a black belt test right in the middle of a snowstorm was a bad idea. <laughs> but you know we were well yeah but come on we're, we live in northern new england we're, and, if, we're, and if you're not going to train do big things during snow, then that comes out at least six yeah, months so a right. year. So, 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 but we're hot martial arts. Yeah, yeah. We, can, we can drive through snow, That's snow right. squalls and get to the black belt test. But what the heck, you're not, not, not going to show, right? So, we were there, we did the tests and everything. I think it was tested for my third degree black belt. I think my third degree black belt. So, we're doing this. So, I, for some reason, I end up being in the front row of it, which is a rare occurrence for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I end up being in the, in the, in the front, front row, and it was like, 8.30 at night, we had just finished everything like that. Everyone passed. Everyone did a great job with it and everything like that. We're lining up. We're all ready to bow out. And Len walks through the door. He had drove all the way from New Jersey in the snowstorm to be there for that. And the running joke was, ah, Lindsay, we got to start all over again. And we were going to start <laughs> laughing like, that, like this. But, I mean, the fact that someone like that would, it's its like coming to a family reunion. Yeah, that's and perfect. there's no reason why, there's no way, you know what, you have a family reunion that's been off, you haven't seen your grandmother in a long time. And it's like, there's no way you're going to miss this because of that. And that's the feeling that we all got. And it wasn't just obligation. It, it, it was, no, it was no. a genuine desire. Absolutely not. Because we, um, um, obviously by, by the, by the rhetoric, what I just said, I mean, physically he was not either for the, for the test because we did it anyway, you know? And, uh, uh, you know, it made us all feel like we were, worthy of something because yeah. he come into this. this is mr durkin's uh, uh 
highest ranking highest ranking student. Um, but just that type of mentality of of, of, of course I'll be there. So why would I not be there? And every time he can't make it something, he apologizes. I'm sorry, I have two things of this. I said, you don't have to apologize. That's fine. But but he that's he, where he wants. But he be. means it though. Yeah. He 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 would. Not the other obligations aren't important, but said he wants to know that you know this is a high obligation. This is what he wants to be a part of, and the family that he wants to be a part of, and um, you know through his own struggles and everything like that. But this is these are the people who helped him get through those struggles, and, and, and we all, in one way or another, all martial artists I feel have that type of culture, whether it's their own school or people that helped them out outside of school. So there is a culture in there of all people who've gone through challenges whether it's their own and i'll call my challenge my own made up challenges i was unconfident myself not that people went around beating me to get unconfident but or other challenges that come in this this was what helped them get mm-hmm. through that and there were people there who had no reason to reach their hand out but they did mm-hmm. and uh that that resonates with uh, with people really well and people will remember that i've had people come up to me who I honestly took me half a second to remember who the person's name was because I've been around teaching for a while. And, uh, and they it's say, it's a challenge. I think a lot of it is. Right, hey, like, you, 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 you did so much for me. Right. Right. And they come over and say, you really helped me at a time. I did not need to. I'm like, Oh good. I'm glad. I'm like, I was like, okay, right, right, right. John. Yeah. Good to see you again. <laughs> and it's, you know, it's, you're, I, and, you're, and, and, you're and, better and, than I am. I struggle with names. Admittedly like this. Okay. Right. Good. And, but they'll tell something. And, and sometimes you don't, appreciate how much that means to somebody but in a world where everyone said nothing you were the one person who said hi and that that was it you know and sometimes you don't realize what what that can do and i hate to be i hate to be a cliche like you know um uh, you know, show kindness at all times because you don't know who needs it the most or anything like that but i mean it, this but it's is, a cliche for a reason but this is this is what that type of culture yeah. is and for a weak person who maybe only be weak, you know, maybe only think they're a weak in their sure. mind, but a weak person in a go to environment where they can help feel strong, mm-hmm. that's a big thing for people. And I think there's that, very there's, few things you can, you can do with that. There's you know? something really poignant with that. Yeah, we, 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 I think I've shared this on, on the show before. You know, we, so much of what we do in our modern lives, we don't get to point to outcomes. Yeah. Right. But with martial arts training, it's not just, I learned this form, mm-hmm. right? And there are a lot of schools that that inadvertently becomes a carrot because now I know this thing. Yeah, of course. Now yeah. I know this technique. Now I can do this difficult thing. Now, you know, I, I, come away, oh, I'm bruised, but I'm not hurt. Right. Right. Like there, there are so many things that can come through from training. And I think even more that can come from really challenging training. Yeah. Because you can point to him and say, I did that. Mm-hmm. And, and the, the quick story that I've shared has nothing to do with martial arts. I had an IT company and my staff would fight to build the cheap bookcase mm-hmm. because they could put in an eight hour shift fixing computers and it didn't look different. Yeah. They knew it was different, but there's something about tangibly getting stronger, faster, knowing something. I built that, whatever it is. Right, of course, yeah. That I, I think is is uh, valued on a kind of primal, fundamental level for us. Uh, Mr. One of Mr. D's famous lines that you go up to it, and it says, you know, people can take away your knife away from you. They can take away your gun away from you. They can, he says, but give me your karate. So you can't take the karate away from you. And while he uses it as a running joke in class, you know, this is what we're doing. I think it's, and he appreciates this too, but he's just using it. He, he often uses it as, as a joke. You can defend yourself in the shower as much as you can defend yourself uh, in the, in the Alps. You know, this is what martial arts can do for you. I think an achievement, like getting your first black belt, um, first lady, but an achievement like that is something that no one can take away from the person who has it. So if they never train ever again, you know, they get to the black belt, fine. They check that box off. They're going on to other things, you know, or, 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 or whatever. And, and I don't hold that against people. I mean, I, I mean, I mean, everyone wants to, I mean, if you're in, if you're in the college environment, everyone wants you to, all the professors want you to get your master's degree, mm-hmm. but it doesn't mean that the that the bachelor's degree is bad. It's just that it's just that the bachelor's degree Depends is bad. Depends on why you're training, what you set out for, right, what exactly. your goals are. Yeah. But no one can take that achievement away from you. Mm-hmm. 
that's something that you accomplish. You walk through the floor. No one made you do it. This is not, it's, we're not a state run environment where you have to do martial arts. Not that I don't think that that would be a bad thing. If everyone did martial arts, I think that'd be a very good thing. But this is something, we're here. this is something that the person walked through the door every day. And if anyone who has kids knows that dragging a eight year old into doing something that they don't really want to do, I mean, everyone has their days they don't want to sure. do something, but they really don't want to do is, is impossible. You might as well push them up because they're not going to go anywhere. Um, uh, they wanted this and they accomplished it and they pushed for it and they strove for it and they panicked about it and they mm-hmm. sweat about it. And many times they bled about it and got injured with it, but they didn't stop anyway. And that's one of the speeches we're doing a big black belt test in, uh, next week. And one of the things I'm going to be saying to them is that, you know, regardless of what happens, say, and they have other chances to make up the test and everything like that. And some people will pass this and people won't, 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 won't. I said, bear in mind, no one can take away from the fact that you're standing right here. It says, you put yourself here. It says, you know, everything else is just what we need to do to tweak it to make sure that you can actually get the next rank. But don't tell you, you put yourself here right here today. I mean, the instructors helped you, of course. You had the classmates in there. But you walked through the door, you came in, you chose to be here that that day, and you stepped up to the challenge. And all of you have gotten better. And we'll have 150 people testing. Oh, wow. With different ranks awesome. uh, next Saturday. And... Uh, it's going to be one of those uh, neat things. So, like, no, you all, you all walked in. You all are here for that, for that reason. So, congratulations. You already are this right now. We just got to get the details down, and that's what, and and that's what people can take away from. And I'm talking about we have awkward teenage boys going up and giving their instructors hugs because it means, you know, when they get the belt, that means that much to them. And it's not the belt that matters. It's you know the fact that the instructor is recognizing the person as being an equal, and that's just. Wow, that's just cool. So, yeah, I think that goes a long way. I think in a culture where we're dealing with, um, and everyone says, you know, nowadays things are different. If you look, go through every 10 years, always something that throws people through a loop. Mm-hmm. But we're dealing with a lot of people with uncertainty. We're dealing with a lot of people who are nervous about who they are underneath and everything mm-hmm. like that. And it's really become, I think, if there was ever a time for confidence this would, there's ever not a time for confidence, but whoever was one, this is one that is what they need the most. And uh, whatever decisions people make for themselves, that's their own decision, but they have to be strong enough to make the decision. I, I see life kind of as, as, you know, a series of puzzle pieces, Yeah. right? And it doesn't matter what pieces are missing. Martial arts can plug in. Right. And, and that, and I don't know anything else that does that. Uh, Dave Kovar, I'm assuming you've heard the name, no, okay. no. Uh, says that regularly. And he said, uh, he t- maybe, uh, maybe I took it from, from, uh, maybe from I've, 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 I didn't I, realize I, I've stolen a lot of things from him. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. He's been on the show. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Cobra and I are more or less on a first name basis now. I'm happy to know that he, he knows me. He knows me in a room, which I'll, 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 oh, I'll, cool. I'll, I'll take as a plus. You know, that weird guy, that weird guy in the corner. Uh, but, <laughs> <laughs> but Hey, it's, 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 it's something, you know, he, he, he said before that, uh, we got obesity, we got, um, bullying we have uh uh uh, health health Mm -hmm. issues we have uh stamina all these different issues uh every culture that you can see that has popped up on the news nothing attacks it nothing attacks all of them as good as martial arts does he says so be proud of what it is that you teach because you teach people life and how to live it better and that's it was a cool cool way to start a seminar which of course he does a great job anyway so yeah so he 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 um, there are a handful of people that without trying had tremendous influence on what we do yeah. with whistle kick. And, and, uh, he is, he is, one of yes, I mean, he, yes, he yeah. knows that I, I've, I've told him that story and actually, um, I don't know if he'll be there, but, but he'll be around in just over a month. Yeah. And I'll see him again and get to train with him again. Yeah. He's, he's a good guy. Yeah. So I, I kind of want to go back. Um, so you start at 11 and, and this becomes your thing and we're, and we've heard a lot about why it mm-hmm. kept you in, you know, this environment that re- really resonated for you. Where along your path might, might the next kind of chapter be? Because, you know, I, I'm not going to ask you how old you are, but you're clearly older than 11. Uh, by... As my kids would say, considerably older. <laughs> <laughs> you said it, not me. Uh... Well, they say it all the time. Right, right, right. So it's one thing for somebody to do something for a year or two. Or yeah. a few years. Yeah. But when somebody's doing something, you said 30 plus years, there are a near infinite number of reasons to stop doing something. 
Yes, and some of those were probably pretty big. And I tell that to people all the time when they've been training for a decent length like, of time. But especially black belt says, you know, you all had reasons why to not to not train. Yeah. And I'll name a couple of them right now. But in a group of fifty, I'm not going to name all of them. I said, but I mean, injuries, job changes, school changes, mood changes. <laughs> like, uh, you know, I can, you can list a hundred different things, and you probably have gotten them all at one point or another. But yet you're still here anyway. Right. It says that is that is the difference between, you know, a white belt, someone who dabbled in the martial arts f f for a bit, and you. Mm -hmm. you, know, so, you know, whether you do it today, do it tomorrow, do it the next week, it's really inevitable. And that's the, that's the cool part about it. You should look at this confidently like that. So I know you're all scared of your minds, but, it, but you look at this confidently. Uh, with me, um, teaching was a big thing with me. This helped me with my confidence a lot. The, when did uh, you start teaching? Uh, when I started teaching, when I was 16. And uh, Mr. Durkin started running a uh, storm program. I'm sure if you remember, remember the, mm -hmm. the acronym. And I was one of his first ones, uh, one of his first ones in, in, in there. And I started helping out. It was one of those things that it helped me a lot. So it'd be cool to help. It. And um, like I said before, I have a, a presentation. Presenting in front of people was not my thing. Mm -hmm. I uh, always had a very vivid imagination. I remember even in school, you know, do the creative writing thing. Now go read your thing up and up in front of that. I'd make this whole long story with all these different twists and everything like that and get up there I couldn't open my mouth luckily a friend of mine from class would grab the thing for me he'd read it mm -hmm. and I would write it so we worked together as a good team but I would lock up I couldn't talk and everything like that. so even just standing up in front of other people was a challenge that I saw other people do good at and that kind of intrigued me I thought okay that'd be neat if I could pull that off mm. never really looked at it as a career until later on. It was more like, oh, this would be a fun challenge to help get around that. It'd be one of those things like, you know, love to teach a couple of classes a week and things like that, you know, with the, uh, and, you know, while mixing with. with so, so 16, yeah. you're starting to have conversations with your parents around next steps, whether that's college or trade right, school right, or getting right. a job. Was martial arts part of that conversation? No, was that, oh, no. And in, in spite of himself, my father wasn't 100% on board with when I decided to go in that direction. But believe it or not, it was him that actually gave me the first the first inkling. I said, really? Would you think of this as a career? And at that time, I, it was like the answer was no. Mm. That and, and answer was no. For all the challenges of the reasons why I do it now, is it sounds like a lot of responsibility. A lot of people looking at you and everything like that. In a, a lot, a lot in a lot of ways that you could go wrong with it. And the last yeah. thing I want to do is be the person responsible for messing up someone's life. I like to help mm -hmm. them, but and it was lot, loads of reasons. And um, I, my first answer was no. I remember saying, kind of, kind of quick, we were having lunch in, um, in the in the kitchen. I was, no, why would I do that? Like this, I remember like being not insulted by the thought process of it, like, like, you know, no, but it was him, he fought me later on, but it was him that actually gave me the first thought, the first inkling that maybe I should start thinking along that line. Mm -hmm. And like everything else, you know, uh, it's a matter of uh, uh, motivation and opportunity and opportunities present itself. And I said, okay, I'll give this a shot this time and see how far this goes and give this a shot this time. So and then one thing led to another and kind of went into there. I will say the thing that made it really click that this was what I was going to do for the rest of my life and there was no really other way around it. Um, I never admitted it to anybody. This was like, well, the things you walk in like, no, I'm going to be a martial arts and I'm going to teach karate for a living and, and you know, stand in my pajamas all day. You know, it's like, that's really not a plan you tell people with confidence, you yeah. know, when people are going off to become dentists and doctors and things like that. It, it yeah. is, it is, we still haven't reached a point where no. even in most martial arts schools, yes. telling your instructor, I want to have a school as my job it is, is well-received, well-respected. Right. It's usually, are you sure? Right. Or at least that's, that's my experience in talking to people. And it's a little experience for, for a lot of, a lot of pe pe people. Uh, I think from what I'm seeing, I think that's, changing a little I bit. I think it's about to. It's, I think it's, we're right on the It's cusp. like, um, um, it's kind of like how, you know, how uh, YouTubers, you know, as a culture mm -hmm. started making money and started doing things. That I think we're in there, but if you ask 10 years ago, it says, oh, you do that? Yeah, right. You know, like the, yeah, like this, so, yeah, but what's your real job? You know, I think, I right. think, I think we're right on the cusp of like what it was like 10 years ago for that. It's a slowly starting to say you could actually it's, look at this as a career moving, moving forward. It's become more acceptable to follow your passion, which I right. think is great. And on the other side, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 44 and I, and when I look at the numbers, I was pretty much right at the end of it being a no brainer to go to college. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah. If you want to go to college <coughs> now, I, I'm, I'm not saying anybody shouldn't go to right. college, but you got to do the math. Yes. Because yeah. there are people getting themselves in trouble 
And if you plot out, okay, yes, I can get a degree and I can start here in this company. A lot of times you're going to get further economically starting at the bottom and not having right. that debt. Right. And so when you look at those two things together, it becomes, oh, what do we do? Right. And I, I work with some martial arts schools. We've had plenty of school owners on the show. And they talk about setting students up as kind of that next path. Okay, right. so first, second, third, what, whatever, whatever it is. And now it's, okay, now I'm going to help you go off on your own. Because mm -hmm. that's a whole different skill set. It is. Yeah. Yeah, because teaching is one thing. Uh, managing people um, is another thing. And uh, and no matter how good, the, and I was teasing a, 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 a good friend of mine who's been, uh, uh, grew up very similarly to me, started mm -hmm. as a teenager, uh, worked his way up to head instructor, now runs a big, now run, runs a big school in, in Hollis, very successful school in Hollis. And we were joking about how uh, the best teachers have the worst students. And that's mm. like the joke. And it's like, it's not, no, you have fantastic students as well, but because you're a good teacher, you've been able to hold on to the students who are naturally very hard at pulling this off. And that's a wonderful thing. And that's wonderful because you're giving them an opportunity to do something that almost in any other environment, they would not have even mm. dreamed that they could actually do that. And we picked them up. You, you've seen people before like that. You pick them up a crowd. This person never thought he would ever be a strong person. Mm. He looks at himself as an overweight kid who's, uh, who you know, who gets mediocre grades at school. You know, and if you look at his family background, they kind of view themselves similarly. And this kid loves it, but doesn't think he's going to succeed in it, but just loves it, and which is which is great. We're going to help him learn that no, you can succeed in that, and that's a neat, that's a neat trans, tra transformation uh, uh, to see that happen in there. But um, uh, you know, the, the the best the best teachers have a puddle of the worst students in there. And I mean, just the physical combinations and everything sure. like that. These people are not natural athletes. It, it doesn't make sense to them. And they'll come up and tell you, I mean, I've had adults in the same, in the same predicament. So this does not come. This well, does martial arts tends to attract people it does. of that nature. It does. You know, and, and, you know, whether or not this is changing, I, I can't say, but I think throughout my lifetime in martial arts training, martial arts was the physical thing that non-athletes did. Right. Yes. Yeah. It, I think that's changing a little bit. I think athletes are looking, I think people, athletic people are looking at what should have been obvious to everyone, but the obvious benefits of martial arts training, and they really want to be a part of that. And well, they really want to. We, you know. It's one of the few places that you can engage in, in, a, in a physical pursuit mm -hmm. that our standards are our own. Yes. Right? Most of us engage in. in in physical stuff through school mm -hmm. and what is permissible in school sports is not the same now as it was right. when we were kids. Right. I, I, I wasn't on the football team. I was on the soccer team, but I watched what the football kids were doing. Yeah. I can't imagine that that's even legal now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. right. <laughs> and here we are, we come in and, you know, go back to the beginning of our conversation. We are banging the tar out of each other, leaving with Bruce, thanking people for it, even paying for yeah. it in a, in an environment that, doesn't really exist in very many other places. There's right. some some right. other things that are similar, uh, but very very few. Yeah, um, uh, I don't know how much you follow Maya, but they uh, gave a lifetime achievement award to uh, Marcus uh, Latrell, who was known <laughs> as the lone survivor from the from the week. And a lot of people don't uh, don't realize that he's a black belt in ju in jujitsu, uh, judo. Sorry, not jujitsu. Um, and uh, he talks about achievement uh, about that, and he is a strapping guy. He's, I met him. He is huge. I'm thinking, geez, imagine him all decked up with armor and gear and guns and rifles and everything like that. I said, no wonder I'd be scared of him. Like this. What do you do with something like that? He holds a little door frame. Yeah. But he's a big guy. And um, uh, he says to this day, talking about just talking about accomplishment. Uh, and of course, he has awards from uh, you know from uh, you know from all the valley he's done and everything, like serving his country and everything like that. He said the only two things he puts on his wall are his seal trident and his black belt. <laughs> It says, in his world, that's the only thing he's earned. Everything else was luck. And it was a neat perspective of that. It says, that I earned. It says, and that I keep on my wall. That's, that's something that my seal tried. And, of course, you know, it was a big thing with him, too. And he said, uh, that I earned. Was, uh, you know, I could have failed that, and I didn't. I passed, I passed that. I, and that was a neat perspective of it. He was talking about, don't be afraid of, you know, that you earn this. And this is something that is yours, and it's no one else's. So it was a neat there's a similarity in there, right? I, yeah. I, I didn't go through Bud's Seal no, Training no, Camp. No, and neither did I. <laughs> but I have heard and read things. I have heard some accounts yeah. from folks who have. And 
it reminds me of my first black belt test. Yes. My first black belt test was the most difficult one I went through. I was 16. And yep, so was I. It, it is, it is a, a point in time that I can look back on and say, I got through that. Yeah. I can get through <laughs> this. And I, my understanding is that's why BUDS is so hard as well, is that they're trying to show you you really don't have limits. Yeah. And if you're willing to say, I've got half a percent more, and keep saying that, there's yeah. always more. Right. If you look at, I've read a lot of, um, you know, Delta Force training books, and mm-hmm. people have gone, gone through it, and, and uh, SEAL training, you know, all, all, all that. And they all seem to have the same predominant mentality. Mm-hmm. It's not the training that is the biggest thing about it. They're trying to find out who's going to give up out in the middle of it. And if you look at what martial arts is, it's, you know, and, uh, and I've heard this phrase before, you know, a black belt is a white belt who doesn't give up. And that's all it is. You have to just keep on plugging away at it. And but if you look at most things in life, everything's that way. If you keep on plugging away at it, you will get you'll get somewhere with it. You may not have, you you may not be the next Chuck Norris, but you're gonna get good at it. You know, you're gonna you're gonna get an accomplishment with it in there. And I that seems to be the resounding mentality, which if that is the one thing that this overweight kid who gets picked on a little bit at school, doesn't feel like he's athletic and has a hard time with his grades, but he's a nice kid and nice and like that. And if he can feel with this journey that he, that whatever he puts his mind to, he has the ability to accomplish it. And it doesn't become a, can I do it type of scenario? It becomes a, uh, what do I want to do scenario? That's a huge paradigm shift. In and I, I find it to be a paradigm shift because you've seen people who, you know, whether it's uh, job related, um, you know, uh, relationship or marriage related or anything like that, you know, you can just see them that they've given up, yeah. and it's just, um, and you see that and you, you you feel bad for them like, really you you could have you could have pushed yourself more mm-hmm. and just and not even much it was literally like right around the corner it was just the next door you had to open it, it was it's, right there it's always closer than you think right and if you have the mentality of I can do anything I want to as long as I'm willing to put the effort into it. And everyone intellectually understands that, but they don't believe in it. Mm-hmm. And, and martial arts is one of those things that it makes you, and one thing I do with my students, right, but I say, uh, but the parents mostly. So what this does is it it makes them climb a high mountain. And when you get to the top of this mountain, you look at other mountains and say, they're all the same height as this one. <laughs> so, yeah. So if you do the same thing you did for this, you're going to get to the top of that one. So now just pick the mountain you want to go to next. It really is just as simple as that. It says it's not, not going to be easy, but it's not impossible. It's quite possible. And one of the things that they talk about in Bud, some of the things they talk about in Delta Force, some of that, it really is they're just weeding out the people who just will quit. Yeah. And it says, and they said right after that, all they do is go into training afterwards. So what was all that for? They said, was just to see if you would quit. And one guy I read, he said the lessons he learned from Buds helped him with the training. And I was trying to figure out what lessons he was talking about. And I, and by the time I was read the book like twice, I was trying to figure out all he was talking about was the confidence level. Mm-hmm. This is what well, we're going to be doing this next drill. He knew he could do it because he could do that. He knew he could do it because he could do that. So therefore he could do this. It says every single thing was just like that. It was easy. It said, wow, great. That's exactly what we're talking about. And There's a discipline that comes with that, that I'm seeing less and less outside of martial arts. You know, yeah. it's um, most of the people in my life do martial arts, but the ones that do not, they watch the things that I do, the things yeah. that I've done professionally. And what, what gave you the confidence? What do you mean you didn't quit? What you, you, you took on that much debt to, to yeah. try to move that right. ball exactly. forward. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, cause I, I'm, I might stop doing something. I don't quit things. Yeah. If it's still worth doing, it's still worth doing. Right. And where does that discipline come from? It comes from martial arts. Yeah. And because of that, I know I'm always going to find a way to land on my feet, no matter yeah. what is going on, no matter what the situation is, professional, personal, uh, romantic, yeah. uh, you know, something's going on. The money's not there. The, the, this is broken. Mm-hmm. I've, I've got a, I've got three groups of people that are, I'm trying to make happy, you know, whatever it is, right. I'm going to find a way to make that work as best I can. And the funny thing is people are attracted to that too. And that always seems to surprise me though. People are attracted to, to that. They're often thrown, they're often thrown off about it. And I, I, because it's I, so foreign to most. It is, and, and and the one thing that still, I, 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 I probably puzzles me is not correct because I understand why now, but always threw me off is that if someone finds out that you're a martial artist and that you've been practicing martial arts for 
really anything north of two years would yeah. make the same criteria. But you know, you've been practicing martial arts your whole life, and I've been practicing martial arts my, my whole life, you know. And uh, you know, at different intensity levels, things like that. But I mean, this is this is a lifetime yeah. venture. Go go going into it. And I know you would look at yourself as a, a middle end martial artist. And I look at myself the same way because there are people well above us, but you meet someone who's not in that field at all and how defensive they get immediately. Like the last, mm-hmm. you know, what do you do for a living? And of course, among, among us martial arts instructors, we hide that like the plague. I mean, it's like one of those things, oh, I guess, I mean, I mean, uh, I mean, they, I mean, you know, the running joke is that, uh, Gynecologists, you know, they say they don't. They just say they're, they're doctors. <laughs> I said, I said, N- I know how you feel because when we bring it up, I, it's like the last thing we want to bring up. And 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 if you're in an environment where like you're in a, cl- in a, in a crowd, you can move away from them. You don't mind it so much. But sometimes you're stuck in an airplane. Like, oh god. And so what do you do? Oh, I uh, business consult. I mean, you make you don't lie, but you do dance around it so much. I'm in the physical fitness industry. Oh, cool. That's a, uh, like I'm a teacher. Oh, that's good. You know, you dance around every single time. And then you have to own up to it because it's a three hour flight and the guy has asked the, the five other questions and it's like, okay, I'm a martial arts instructor. And just waiting for it to come. And every once in a while it's positive, but most of the time it's like, um, well, I fight dirty. Like, okay. You know, like this. <laughs> like, uh, right. Great. Wonderful. Awesome. Like this. Like, Why are you so defensive about this? You ask me what I do, you know, and, um, and it, it dawned you after a while is that in spite of the fact that people won't necess- won't own up to it verbally, there's a lack of confidence out there, a severe lack of confidence, and it's they're not responding. I don't know if you ever read the book Musashi. They did a part in this where, where he jumps back from somebody, from this master, and he springs back, and later on he runs it. He meets the guy again. He said, how'd you do that? He goes, how did I do what? He goes, you made me jump back without moving because I didn't make you do nothing. He says, you're... You're scared of your own shadow. And he was a neat person. He's just, that was all you. Was, I was just standing there like this. And of course, the master was very confident, which is what Musashi read right away. But people read that in martial artists. They read a level of confidence. And it's not like we go around smashing walls to prove that we're martial artists. We just literally just say that we practice martial arts. And, that, and, that, and that's the whole length of the whole sentence. It's their own confidence that they're bouncing off of, which once my head wrapped around that, and uh, I'm Irish, so I'm slow. Uh, <laughs> so it took a while. Uh, once I had wrapped around that, it 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 made me feel really sad for other people mm. because there's no reason why you shouldn't be confident because everyone has their own skill set. Everyone has their own things to go to. I mean, I go to mechanics because I suck at working with cars. So I mean, there's no reason why you shouldn't be confident in being a, being a, a mechanic. I mean, I mean, my truck would be in the yard and I'd be walking to work all the time if it wasn't for you guys. I mean, I know what, what my skill set is. So, I mean... But there is there is something about fighting. It's the only thing, and, and, you know, not that... We know martial arts isn't fighting, but, but a lot of people think that that's, absolutely, you know, yep. the beginning and the end. And fighting is the only thing, and generally it's among men, that people with no experience think they can do at a high level. Right. There is enough... If you ask someone, hey, could you get on stage and perform a magic show opening for, you know, Chris Angel. Right. No, no of course not. <laughs> no. But how many I can people open the door for the guy. <laughs> em- professional MMA fights and say, oh, I, can I could take that guy. Yeah. I'd do fine. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't even think I can do that. Right. <laughs> it's not the same thing. I do fine watching with popcorn off on the side. That's right. why I do great with that. Right. Exactly. I do fine. Yeah, you do fine. Sit down. <laughs> Sit down. Have some more popcorn. It's amazing and then we talk about what you know martial arts gives to people what 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 people gain from through practicing martial arts it's that part that because i remember being that nervous kid mm. being scared of my own shadow and like everyone there's no such thing as it going away completely i mean that nervous kid is still inside me and rearing its ugly head on a regular on a regular basis sure. and casting doubt on every project that i work on and things and, and things like that. you know and i run a um i'm the four, four, four guy um uh producing and running and organizing a big martial arts event every year that we have hundreds of people come down to from all from all over the Is it the Wichi That's the one, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, uh, that, yeah, the, that's, 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 that's a big, that's a big operation. It I is, it is. And know. every single time I'm going at it looking at it like, then I realize I'm a fraud. <laughs> and and that's still in my head. As I'm sitting here right now, I'm thinking I'm a fraud. I really am. It says, I know some things and not a lot of things. So that nervous kid is still inside you uh, because it never goes away. But um I don't know if, how, how about your experience, like, but with me, it, it, me, it, it never has gone away. Yeah, but it, I, yeah. I, I have said a few times on the show, and, and the core team knows that I'm really by nature an introvert. Yeah, I put on a mask. 
Yeah. I put on a role. I, I am, and 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 I've, I've, it's it's helped me grow, and I've, I've changed in who I am in in doing this show. But I I still put on a bit of an act, yeah. right? The idea that there's a camera there and that we're talking, and oh, yeah. you know, we've exchanged maybe a hundred words before. Mm-hmm. I mean, before this show or even out of the context of this, that terrifies me. Yeah. I don't want to disappoint you. I don't want to do a bad job. I don't want to disappoint the audience. Yeah. That's a lot of pressure. Mm. Same thing when you're yeah. getting on a big event. Yeah, and so I'm, I think I realize I'm a fraud. And, I'm like, and that's what goes into my head every, every, mm. every single time. My poor wife is like at night terrors leading up to it all the time. <laughs> That's why she hasn't kicked me out of the house just for that reason. Like, Can you go in the other room? Because you know, I need to sleep at some point. No, uh, so, um, and... Uh, but, you know, so that nervous kid is still inside me. But, I mean, but the other part is I'm, you know, these are people, these are people who I like, whether it's the high-ranking people who I have mm. all the respect for, of course, whether it's the people that work with me, you know, the, my team, who's a fantastic, I have a fantastic team of people, just very, very hardworking individuals and uh, people who don't mind putting their thoughts forward enough to make sure that everything changes, you know, they, you know, um, and which is, which is great. They, um uh, you know, I don't, want, I don't want to disappoint them. You know, my job was to make sure everything went correctly, and I don't want to disappoint them, obviously. And of course, then you got the ten-year-old kids coming in mm-hmm. who are seeing martial arts at a grand venture mm-hmm. at this scale, um, which is like, you know, to me, it's like uh, 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 Charlie Bucket walking into the really walking the chocolate factory because that's what I felt like when I first started going to these things. Uh, my first EFC convention, I think it was. Uh, I was uh, 21. I was 21 when I went to my first one. And it was like, oh, my God. That was back yeah. when EFC was huge. Right, exactly. I think we had like uh, 1,800, 1,800 martial artists there. And every person down the line, every person was just as nice and just as hard working mm-hmm. as the next guy going into there. And believe it or not, I sat at a table with Dave, with Dave Kofa, Dave and Tim Kofa. And they say, oh, Dave, Tim, how are you doing? And I was like, oh, my God, it's you guys. And then, you know, literally, you know, shaking, shaking my pants the whole time. And uh, so, you know, running a big event like that and, you know, I don't want to disappoint them because this is their experience. I don't want to disappoint that. So I'm scared out of my mind. <laughs> I go in and I'm literally sh- sh- shaking. A couple of the scenes go to relax. You're fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like this. But I'm scared uh, out of my mind. And, um, you know, that nervous kid is still inside me. But it doesn't paralyze me to stop from from putting the extra 20 grand into the project to make it one step better so that, those kids go home and say, yes, absolutely. You know, these, this is the people I want to attach myself to. And, you know, I gained so much from, from, from being there and just, but uh, I mean, obviously you go to a seminar, you don't learn life-changing skills necessarily, but you get inspired to work on life-changing skills. And, and you know, uh, so it's, it's, is it worth that? It's absolutely worth that. And, um, uh, but that is, uh, but to see people without the confidence to take a small step forward, that's, as I get older, that's becoming more and more painful to watch. How, what, do, what do you do to help them? Knowing, especially since, you know, we, we've talked about thinking that when you are early on in that journey, when you are younger, that it's just you, yeah. right? And yeah. knowing that as, as you age, as you gain experience, it's, it's not everybody. just you, it's everybody. It's everybody yeah. How does that help you maybe work with or talk to that, that younger, less experienced person? Well, we're dealing with a, and you could bring me on. You could ask me at any point. I could tell you we're dealing with a couple of interesting scenarios at the dojo. Um, I mean, the dojo has been around for a long time, and as a result, uh, as a result, we have people coming from all different aches and wills. So, um, and because we have a good success r- record, of course, naturally, more people come with bigger challenges mm-hmm. as a result. So we're dealing with that, and it's a neat. And sometimes some people come in and act like a jerk. Mm-hmm. And um, some people are just jerks. Some, and, 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 and some people, and some people legitimately just are. Um, but a lot of it, most of the time, is them fighting their own struggles. And if you can find out what that struggle is, or find out not necessarily the struggle itself, what the struggle is itself, but like key into what the person really, his brain is really going for, or she's really go, going through, and you can twist that and throw that in a different direction, and try to give the person confidence. Uh, we have a young lady who's. All her kids trained with us at one point mm-hmm. or, or another, and um, a nice woman, everything like that, but never really did anything um, uh, sports related, martial arts, physical, or anything mm-hmm. like that. Uh, you know, and 
you know, she had, had a whole bunch of kids, so of course, a bunch of shoulder injury, you know, a bunch of shoulders, and had every excuse on the planet why not to train, but she really wanted to give it a try. Mm. And now she's now she's three quarters away towards black belt. Mm. And even the other instructors working with her says it's amazing seeing the light in her face when she comes in. She's still not the highest performing martial artist in there, but my God, is she getting good? She's getting really good, and she is really coming out of her shell. She really is looking like like you can see the click in her head. I can actually do this, mm. and that was a neat neat transformation. And I, I would say that if anything. You know how you say that you know following your passion is is not necessarily a bad thing. If anything makes the long hours, the phone calls at night, and everything to go along with all that, and uh, certainly with my case, the complete the complete insecurity, um, worth its while that you can turn a light on like that. But you, as you know, with that light, you can do anything, and that's the cool part about that. Mm -hmm. And when you read stories about buds or stories about like that, it was just that that light was just turned on. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, of course, the guys there will joke is it had to be beaten into me, but the light was turned on. <laughs> <coughs> and with me, the light had to be beaten into me, and I appreciated that. And it, certainly what an Irish kid like me needed to have happened, but that was uh, that was what did it. So that that goes a long way with that, and that helps you look towards the next challenge. And instead mm -hmm. of looking at the person as being, oh, he's a jerk, you look at, okay, okay, what's going on with this person? Because obviously he walked through the door for a reason. And that you should look at that substantially because they took themselves out of their world and put themselves into your world. And in their own way, they're crying for help. Mm -hmm. Even though they're not verbally saying that to you, they're going to object to you. They're going to say, well, I, I don't see why this, I don't see why this, I don't see why that. They are begging you to help them. And they are screaming on the inside. And if you can help relieve that, and you'll see it comes in the next time. Like just really, you see the switch happens. They just come in relieved and having fun mm -hmm. and training and getting stronger. And every time they they come down, we had a gentleman uh, who uh, I wouldn't say rough around the edges, but he grew up in a very athletic environment, so very competitive athletic envi environment. And his uh, mother just passed away, mm -hmm. and he uh, mother-in-law passed away, and he I guess he was pacing in the hallways. <laughs> <laughs> he told me I could say the story, so that's fine. Um, he, he pacing in the hallways. I guess his wife kicked him out because he was pacing so much the hallways because at the hospice, you know, can't that point. So it doesn't Buzz Durkin have a class at this point you can go to? Get out of here. <laughs> and he did, came to class, mm. grabbed some food, came, went back, and, you know, and of course his mother will eventually pass away. Mm. And he said, uh, I know I always thank you guys, but thank you for being there because I needed that workout that day. I needed to be around people who were, gonna, who were just positive. And no one knew him going in what was – I mean, we all knew that she was getting towards that point because he had told us before. Uh, but no one knew that that's what, what was going on at that point. He just came to class, worked out, and mm -hmm. like that. I, said, I needed that that day. But just to have the confidence to walk into a place where you could be very vulnerable. And I, and I hate to be gender biased, but you get a strong guy, they don't want to say that they're vulnerable. You know? it, it, it is – it is socially less acceptable for, for men to be vulnerable and emotional. And, and, and a lot of that's changing, but it's still there. It's still very much there. And this and person the would be from the generation the that that was yeah. definitive, you know. And, uh, and and that was cool. That was a, that was a cool story. It's, and it's just neat to see that. that family way. again. Yeah. Okay, we've got that thread of family. You, you brought up challenges. What's your next challenge? What are you, what are you fighting for? With your training is there is there something you're looking at is there something that you're saying you know this is my next step or my next piece um i think that there's a lot of diverse ways of practicing martial arts mm. of course way true is the best of course but, <laughs> i just have to put that out there and i think for the most part this is stripping away but I would love to see more people training with each other or going to like, um, I think you went, you were at Terry Dow's symposium, mm -hmm. training events like that, mm -hmm. just for the sake of mixing it up with, of, with other people. And even if you there just as a spectator and talking to people, I mean, that counts. Yeah. Um, I mean, training, I, I love training. I love doing something different for the sake of doing something different. I may never touch it again, but it was fun. You know, yeah. uh, um, so I would love to see more people shed away the fear of losing their students to a better instructor. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a, 
very sturdy organization. It took us a lot of work to kind of get to this point. But when we do our black belt training, they're all independently run schools. We actually uh, make it required that the, the students have to rotate among the schools. And of, of course, from a sensei, it's a very, very sensitive subject. We took us a while to get to that point of the, the, that this was an okay thing, even down to the point with, with how we're supposed to talk to them in the class to mm -hmm. make sure it was on the same page. So it was a lot of work to, to get that. that. But, but it had a fantastic concept because you know, you go over your uncle's house and he has this huge, beautiful mansion and everything like that. You know, doesn't have kids, you know, so he, he put it, you know, he works the stock market and everything like that. You know, he's away for most of the time, but the house is beautiful. I mean, who wouldn't want to live in a house like that? And you go home with your mom and dad because that's your home. And I would love to see people treat their first teacher as their home. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you live, you don't, I mean, Mr. Durkin has a beautiful standalone uh, 8,000 square foot building and everything like that. But so what? It was the other guy that that put that spark into you. That's your home. You go to the other ones. Great, wonderful, enjoy it. You know, and another. But you come back and talk to the same person because this is the person who unlocked, who put that spark in you. Know, you need that person's advice. That person knows you. And I would like to see people from the students' perspective, but I also like to see the teachers. We teach confidence, even though many of us don't don't have as much as we want. Mm -hmm. Act confidently. No, go ahead. Go to that train. It'd be it'd be a great it'd be a great great time. I know this guy knows this guy. Y'all have, have, have a ball. Tell me tell me how it was like when 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 he come back. The same way that your father would send you off to a uh, to you know to camp. It's not like you're gonna live there. No, it was a fun camp. Came back. What'd you learn? No, I thought I worked hard to do archery today. Well, that was neat. Good. How'd you learn? Show me. You know, you you go back and tell your parents and like all the things that you worked on, and not like you're gonna go run away and go go with them for the rest of your life. No, it was just a and people. I love to see people treat martial arts that way. And you know, one of the things we're trying to get going with Weichikon is mix as many styles into there as as mm -hmm. possible. Really have high quality instructors, so they come in and every person is a good instructor, and they they do that. And Terry Dow's trying to do that with his. And I'm just one of those two out, but there's yeah. there's a lot of other ones really Marshall trying. Marshall Summit, Marshall Summit, right? Exactly. Lots of lots of other ones that uh, that try to do the exact same thing. Try to get on, on into there, and I think and pool resources because. We're all trying to get the same thing done, regardless of what style you're working on. Yeah. And I mean, Okinawa had people on trees with knives in the mouth attacking people when they're on, when they're on the way home. And in in Korea, it was different. In mm -hmm. China, it was different. In in Japan, it was different. And it's but they all work on the same thing. They're trying to walk confidently from where they live to where they work, mm -hmm. and be able to come back in one piece, and or a schoolyard or anything like that. So it, the same. We're after the same thing and i think i would love to see that more and there's i'm not the only one there's a lot of other people who are trying to get the mix to happen i don't say that you should keep on changing styles i think you should stay true to your current style and add other things into mm -hmm. it because that's your core you know if someone's a taekwondo mm -hmm. person stay a taekwondo person you know add weichi into it whenever you want to you know add jujitsu whenever you want to it you know add krav maga whenever you want to it fine if you size a krav maga guy same thing you know you should stick to your core but and stick to your home but that doesn't mean that, that you should not go on venture. vacation. Go on vacation. Go on camps. Yeah. Go on camps with yeah, with, like with that. That's a great And thing that's uh, so I I would love to see the senseis being more open to that. Um, and I understand how hard it is. I mean, I mean, you know, when you send your kid to the camp for the first time, I mean, you're on the phone. Okay, is he okay? Is he okay? You know, someone picking on him. You know, like that. You but that's, that. you know, it, it's funny. I've I've never liked the term McDojo, but the way you're describe, you're talking about this, I think I finally have a definition that works for me. McDojo is a school that's operated out of fear. Yeah. Well, what you're talking about is that difference between right. love and fear. If, if dad's calling up the camp, is the kid okay? They love the kid. Right. If they're not letting the kid go, even though the kid's ready and yeah. wants to go, that's fear. Right. It's an important distinction. Right. Is it? Yeah. And and I get the fear. And, and trust me, sure. I get. I, I absolutely get the fear. And I mean, the last thing you want to do is you know have anything bad happen to someone you've been working on for such a long right. period. Of time. I mean, I get all that. But we really should. I really like to see actively and, and you know. Next ten years pursuit of mine would be to, and I, I'm not the only one doing it with with the stock process, is to try to get that to open yeah. up more. Because let's face it, if let's say someone from our school goes to your event and they come back fired up, 
they're fired up. Everybody wins. That's great. It's, 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 you know, they learn something new from you guys. You probably get a little bit of something out of him. They come back. They, yeah. He's fired up. He's training harder the next time because, oh, my God. And then what are they doing? You know, the kid doesn't come from camp saying he hates being around the father. He comes back from the camp saying, Dad, thank you for letting me go. Yeah. And for the most part, that's why I see most much less come back. They say, thank you for the recommendation. That was a I loved it. I had a great time doing that. And it's not like I'm going to go pack up and go work with him. No, they don't do that. They say, thank you, because you're the one who pointed me in the right direction. You're right. still my guidance uh, going into that. So I would love to see more of that. And I think all that does is fire people up more and make them feel like they're not alone. If you're, I mean, we have a good size school, mm -hmm. so it may not affect us as much. But there's lots of schools that are 50, 50 people. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that's great. Nice, intimate little crowd and everything like that. And that's, and that, and that and, I'd actually and, say 50 is bigger than average. Yeah, yeah. Right. So you average all the martial arts schools. Yeah, right. But, but, but a 50-person school is yeah. a nice size school. Mm -hmm. The teacher has a real good connection with every single one. But I like that size. I think, it's, I think that's a great size. I like to see more small schools happening with opportunities for them to train in other places because you get the intimacy of the of the one-on-one -on -one right. and you've got the benefit of, of seeing. But the challenge is, and I'm, and I'm sure you being one of the few teens in your adult classes and I was one of the few teams in my class you really do feel like you're the only person who does this mm. in spite of the fact how everyone's going you walk into a room like that and you realize you see 50 other teens all doing different things oh my god there's actually other people who deal with the same challenge and one thing I love about going to the UFC conventions is that you know as a martial arts instructor no one else but martial arts instructors knows what it's like to deal with students like that all the time and you're in the elevator with six other martial artists going right, down right. and all of a sudden and one of those i have one of those today what a pain in the neck seriously it's very <laughs> simple you do this and do this and not talking about the kid they're talking about the parent that they have to try to say look okay no it does cost this that's what it has to cost sorry this is what it's like no i'm not gonna change 15 like this anyway and, and yeah no, not not mad just right, grabbing right, right. just grabbing no, but, it's, it. but it's like i was like good someone else understands i'm not the only one who deals with it that's great good I'm not a loser. I'm actually, no, 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 you're among everyone else. We all will deal with that, you know, like that. And of course, in, again, like I said, intellectually, everyone gets that. But to be in a room full of people who are all like that is kind of nice. And it helps make you feel like, helps take the anxiety away of that you're the only idiot in the world who, who can't figure this out. No, you're among 50 other idiots who can't figure this out. And welcome, welcome to the club, you know. And uh, the same thing, too, like we have a, uh, you know, a, a middle rank, a brown belt student coming and say, I'm really not as strong as everyone else's. Actually, everyone's not as strong as everyone else. And that's why we're all here. You know, <laughs> so you're going to trip and fall. So good. Congratulations. It's just like we tripped and fall. Don't worry about it. You know, and you have that is, um, if I were to say anything, that would be the thing I would like to see mm -hmm. more. And then the, if I were to pursue in any direction, and, 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 and I am with a lot of other people help, uh, helping and just as enthusiastic, I would like to see that mm -hmm. more. Martial arts like camp style, not necessarily camps, but yeah. camp style. Cross just training opportunities, cross training opportunities, and, and not people to worry about. He's gonna steal my student, and and to this day we still get that. Well, I don't want. I'm not sure. I don't want my students. I said, okay, we're not gonna steal any of my students. So, yeah. and and that's a, that's a whole other conversation. That we correct, and into. that has to be brought about the other side. Is that sure. the, the other su su uh, places won't steal the other students. They'll say, no, go back to your teacher. He's the person who helped you, or she's the person who helped you get to where you are now. And that's the person that's you. Welcome to come here anytime you want to and train. And uh, so, yeah. Well said. We're, we're going we're gonna to wind down here. I'm going to throw it back to you in a moment to close up your, Please, your final words in a minute. But uh, actually, before we do that, how could people get a hold of you? You do social media, email? Uh, I'm, on, I'm, on, I'm on Facebook. If you go to buzzdurkin.com and okay. fill out the information form, uh, that goes right to our emails. And, the, and just make sure you type in Marcus. It'll go okay. to it. Yeah, so, Great. Yeah, so, so probably the easiest way to do that. People want to get a hold of you. They can do that in that way. Uh, I want to thank everybody for, for being here and, and watching us. And I'm hoping the camera wasn't that blurry the whole time. There. Okay. It's okay. Maybe, I'm, maybe. Better, I'm better off with it. <laughs> Stop. Stop. Maybe. Well, I put the hat on because I figured two of us with, with the <laughs> shine top too might be, too might be a little much. At the yeah. Same time. Yeah, Cameron wouldn't, be, wouldn't know what to do. Uh, go to whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Find the transcripts, you know, links, all that good stuff for this and every other episode we've ever done, ever will do. If you want to support us, go to whistlekick.com and pick something. Pick any of the many things. Come to our events buy something, tell people about what we're doing. We, we've, we're on this big mission and we appreciate your help as we do it. And I appreciate you being here. So, you know, we've talked about a lot of different things today, but how, how would you close it up for the audience? You got any uh, final words? I mean, it sounds very ominous, but. Uh, there's, uh, there's a, 
there's a phrase that, uh, and I don't want to put evil as but I love the phrase. Uh, uh, you know, in 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 order for evilness to uh, to exist, uh, all it takes is for good people to do nothing. Um, if if uh, if uh, if if you, if you're a teacher, if you're a student, um, and all teachers are students as well. I, I mean, you're 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 fighting something, yeah. an evil. If you even know what the evil's in your head, if the evil is just lack of confidence or whatever that evil is. Uh, you know, it, you don't have to beat yourself up with it, but don't give up on the fight because the fight is worth the fight is worth fighting all the time. If you consistently are working working the problem, the problem doesn't become a problem. And I'm a, I'm a I'm a big fan of just uh, never never stopping. And I think that it doesn't have to be giant steps and be small steps, but don't ever, don't ever stop. And that's, uh, don't stop teaching. Don't stop trying to inspire people. Don't stop trying to inspire yourself. Don't stop trying to get yourself better because you always can be a little bit better and you're worth being better. Yeah. So that would be what I would, what I would say to that. Great stuff. Thank you.